Um, there's really two ideas I want to talk about uh, that has to do with the fluid in motion. It's uh, something called the continuity equation and Bernoulli's principle um, that I'll try to give you some intuition for because um, especially continuity equation, uh, it sounds fancy, but it actually describes a really simple idea that you kind of knew already. You just maybe didn't know the implication of. But let me start out with a little bit of demo. You might have seen this. This is a kind of a popular demo dealing with the Bernoulli's principle. So I have this uh, you know, flat, uh, bendy piece of paper. And I'm, what I'm telling you now is um, I can make this paper bend up without touching it. And you might say, all right, the way you can do this, I can blow into it. <sighs> all right, so that's one way to do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it bend up by blowing over it, blowing air over it. So when I do this, this comes up. And this is a result of something called the Bernoulli's principle that says um, when you have a fluid that's moving at some velocity, the, there's a related difference in pressure that occurs. So as I pass the fluid here, that lowers the pressure in this region. Pressure here is higher, so that difference in pressure pushes the paper up. So, I mean, so this is a demo that you might, if you ever visit, I don't know, Exploratorium as a, not kindergartner, as a child, you might have seen it. If you didn't, all right, now you saw it. Um, I want to get more mathematical that um, you might not have seen in other science class. So the first thing I want to address is a consequence of something called continuity equation. Continuity equation. And there are, re uh, there are well, at least two different ways of expressing this that I know of. Um, one involves a differential calculus. I'm not going to use that. Um, the other one looks more like an algebraic relationship, and I am going to use that. And it, um, this is really expressing a very simple principle that you do figure out as you think through this demo. So this shows a flow of some kind of fluid here. That's what the simulation is simulating. And it has some adjustable parameters. I can adjust the flow rate, you know, have less water flowing. I want you to pay attention to the unit. It's liters per second. So it's uh, measuring the, how much volume of water is flowing per amount of time. So I can change the flow rate. Uh, let me set it back to 5,000. That's the default. I liked it enough. Don't need anything else. Um, and I can put sensors all over the place to measure what's called uh, fluid speed. So this is, uh, you know, or fluid velocity. This is, you know, regular kind of velocity. It's measuring, you know, given this particle, how fast is it actually moving? It's moving at 1.6 meters per second. And um, the simulation is set up so that the speed at which this is moving does relate to the speed. So if I increase the flow rate, then one of the ways to do it is just have the particles moving faster and you know speed is greater. Good, all of this makes sense. And I guess there's a pressure here, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. We don't need to talk about it right now. So this is the prediction I want you to make. I'm back down to a flow rate of 5,000 liters per second. And I'm going to make two changes here. I'm going to make this uh, part of the pipe narrower. I'm going to make this narrower. And I'm going to make this portion of the pipe wider. How do you think the fluid speed as would be measured by placing this here or here? How do you think that will change as I make these two changes to the pipe? As I make one section narrower, how do you think the fluid velocity should change? Wait, I heard the increase. Did you say faster, Apti? Yeah, the narrower the speed is faster. Okay. Oh, well. Anyone say a different answer? Same speed, okay. So, well, let's try it and see. 
um, I'm going to make this narrower. Mm, let's see this much up. Stop. Don't know. Yeah, you can kind of see with the particles that it's faster. So good, good job. You guys had the correct answer. A lot of people I would have assumed intuitively would answer that it slows down. At least for me, that would have been my answer. Like I would be thinking of like analogy to uh, analogy to a traffic. Like if you have a narrower portion of the road, traffic usually slows down. The cars don't suddenly start going faster in the narrower portion. Um, so Abdi, can you explain why you predicted that the uh, fluid would be faster here? Okay, area is an error, that's part of this being error. The pressure coming from that area is uh, higher when they touch that point. Hmm? Oh, I see. I, I think this is maybe what you're thinking of, which is a good intuition to have. Like if you have a water hose, and you want the water to be coming out of the hose faster, then what you do is you narrow the end of the thing, that, then the water comes out faster out of the hose, right? That's what you're thinking of. And, and by kind of blocking it off, pressure builds up here, so it makes it go faster. Yeah, all of that is consistent, but I want to actually look at it from a different perspective. So all of what Apti was saying is correct. That when I do this, in fact, uh, since I have simulation, let's just see it. So let me bring this back to what it was. And I can actually put this pressure meter here to measure the pressure here. All right, it has some pressure, 120 something, a kilopascal, and you will see that as I make this narrower, the, hmm, wait, it doesn't increase. Hmm, something else must have happened. Oh, pressure here decreased. <laughs> um, hmm, is that right? I guess that's kinda right. And actually, we'll talk about this um, with the Bernoulli's equation. So, um, so, I mean, so one thing that is correct is there's a difference in pressure. So right now, the pressure between here and here is more or less the same. It's more or less the same pressure. But when I made this part narrower and made the particles move faster, then that somehow decreased the pressure way here. So all right, we'll look at that later. Um, so for now, I want to come up with an explanation that doesn't have anything to do with the pressure because what's happening with the pressure is a little bit weird. How would you explain why the particle is coming in relatively slow? It speeds up here. And here's a funny thing. Does it look like they're slowing back down here? Yeah, in fact, let me do this uh, second part. Let me make the, this portion of the pipe wider. And let's see if they slow down further. Yeah, I make the pipe wider. And you can see that the uh, water actually slows down more. And, you know, once again, that's counterintuitive. You think, you know, in a traffic, when your road widens up, you speed up, you don't slow down. <laughs> so what's going on here? Um, why does water speed up in the narrower portion and slow down in the bigger, wider portion? Once again, I don't want to really deal with the pressure because what was happening with the pressure was weird. I don't <laughs> um, want to have to explain that portion because this is what you'll see. In this wider portion, pressure increased. So, you know, pressure starts out from 120 something, decreases. And then as you go out here, pressure increases again. So, I mean, something's going on with the pressure and we'll talk about it with the Bernoulli's equation, Bernoulli's principle, but it's gonna take some more work. So we will come back to that in a bit. How would you explain it without referring to pressure, Abdi? Because of the volume. Okay. From like the smaller, when you come out too big, you have to fill it that big. You have to fill it that big. Okay, what do you mean by volume? Volume of what? Um, volume of the pipe. Volume of the... Okay, that's closer. I, I do want us to focus on volume, 
but it's not the volume of the pipe that I'm concerned with, although that's part of the picture. It, the volume that I'm really concerned with is the volume of the fluid. And that's really the, um, that's the principle behind whenever somebody refers to something called the continuity equation, you see it in fluids, you see it when you deal with electricity and magnetism, upper division level. This, uh, what's expressed in continuity equation always is the idea of uh, conservation. It could be conservation, um, in this case, it'll be conservation of volume because the kind of fluid we have here is an incompressible fluid. So here, it's conservation of volume. But you know, if we're dealing with uh, like a gas, something that can be compressed, then we might be talking of conservation of mass. Or in terms of electricity, which you might deal with in upper division electrodynamics, that's a conservation of charge. But in all these examples, the idea here, the important idea here is that there is a, some kind of a conserved uh, physical quantity, like a physical object that's conserved. Once it exists in some place, it cannot simply disappear. It has to move through space. So here, uh, one big hint here is that through all these changes in the pipe diameter and changes in the fluid speed, one thing actually remains constant. That's this flow rate. Let me show you with the measurement. I have one thing that actually measures flow rate. Uh, where was it? Um, ah, flux meter. This is what measures the flow rate. So flow rate starting here from here, that's the specified 5,000 liters per second. As I, and as I go to different parts of the pipe, you will see the, um, uh, well, I'm not gonna pay attention to flux. The only thing I'm gonna pay attention to is the flow rate. Flow rate remains the same. 5,000 liters per second comes in through this section here. 5,000 liters per second has to go through this section because there's no space in between where they can accumulate. And as they go through, as they come to wider portion here, still 5,000 liters per second has to flow. So this is a place where it's uh, nice to have an expression for flow rate, as in um, how does this flow rate of some volume per second relate to maybe the fluid speed. That'll help me explain why fluid is flowing faster here and in a way that keeps the flow rate constant. Yeah. So um, I don't wanna spend too much time on this uh, argument, so I will just uh, give you the answer. It's, uh, um, yeah, because this type of stuff is something that we would spend more time with, with uh, uh, with thermodynamics and physics for me. But for this class, you know, we are just uh, talking about something like this, so I don't wanna spend too much time. So this is the sort of standard way to think about this. I'm talking, thinking of flow rate, so I'm thinking of how much volume of water will cross over some space. So one way to express that is, um, give, so this is the boundary I'm thinking of, so I'm looking at, okay, how much volume will cross over this? Well, let's just extend it out a little bit. Maybe it's about this much volume that will cross over this boundary in the next time interval. Good. So when I'm looking at this, there are two quantities for me to worry about. Here, what is the amount of volume? Well, that seems... Uh, um, so I guess what I would do is I would take the area and multiply it by this distance, delta x. That would be my volume, right? Okay, so let me express the volume that way. Area times delta x. And then it's a question of in how much time is this whole volume going to cross over? So I'm looking at the duration of time 
time of, let's say, delta t. Okay? That's the how much time it would take for the last of the particles here to finally cross over. So I can write down my flow rate this way. So flow rate would be volume per time. Right? That's flow rate. Um, so flow rate is equal to volume area times delta x per time, delta t. Do you see some of these terms here being combined in a slightly different way that would give a different physical meaning to some of these quantities? Asia. Yeah, I have this delta x over delta t, right? So the meaning I can assign there is that for a particle here, it's crossing this distance delta x in time delta t. So these particles move, must be moving at some speed given by delta x over delta t. So that's my fluid velocity. So I can call this, well, this is my fluid velocity, v. So, so this is the expression we get for flow rate. Flow rate is equal to area times the fluid velocity. And you will see that you know, if you write down the units, all of that works out. And so in this particular context, this is what we would say based on the continuity principle, that, cons that the, my volume is conserved, meaning my flow rate across all these different cross sections has to remain constant. If it doesn't, then I have this weird situation where more liquid flows in than leaves, or more liquid leaves than flows in, and that just doesn't happen with liquids because they cannot accumulate. So because my flow rate is the same throughout the entire pipe, I can write down something that looks like a conservation law equation. I would write it down this way. I'm going to imagine writing down my flow rate let's say, at a particular point in, along the pipe. And write down your flow rate at some different point um, along the pipe. And because the flow rate is the same here as here, I would have to say area one times fluid velocity one is equal to area two times fluid velocity two. And let's say, my area two is greater than area one. So let's say I'm looking at the fluid velocity in V1. If you solve this for V1, this is what you get. V1 is A2 over A1 times V2. So this is a number bigger than one. So the velocity in the narrower section is greater by the ratio of the areas. So this is one of the conditions that has to be enforced when you have a liquid like water flowing through a pipe. This is called the continuity equation and that um, it's a starting point to, to start talking about um, um, some of the equations and expressions that uh, fluid in motion has to obey. And this is one of the Kind of simplest one, because it's uh, based on the idea of conservation of matter, really. It's based on conservation of matter. And now you know, we have to think about, OK, so if velocity increases, how is it increasing? Because increasing velocity, um, that actually relates to um, increasing kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy of these particles here is lower than the kinetic energy of the particles here. So something must be set up externally. Something must be set up in a way that energy is still conserved. And, but um, so you know, that's the next set of things for us to worry about. But at least this is a starting point. We can say that because the volume has to be conserved, no matter what else happens, at least this has to be true.